Now that we have all our data in place, we can look at the design for our first screen, a list of all the missions next to their mission badges. The assets we added earlier contain pictures named Apollo 1 at 2x.ping and similar, which means they can be read in the asset catalog as Apollo 1, Apollo 12, and so on. Our mission struct has an ID integer providing the number, so we could use string interpolation such as Apollo mission.id to get our image name, and Apollo space mission.id to get the formatted display name of the mission. Here though, we're going to take a different approach. We're going to add some computed properties to the mission struct to send that same data back. The result will be the same, but now the code is in one place, our mission struct. This means any other views can use the same data without having to repeat our string interpolation code, which in turn means if we change the way these things are formatted, for example, if we change the image names to be Apollo-1 or something, then we can just change a property in mission and have all our code update. So please add these two properties to the mission struct now. var display name, string, Apollo, ID, var image, string, Apollo, ID. With those two in place, we can now take a first pass at filling in content view. It will have a navigation view of the title, a list using our missions array as input, and each row inside there will be a navigation link containing the image, name, and launch date of the mission. The only small complexity in there is that our launch date is an optional string, so we need to use nil coalescing to make sure there's a value for the text view to display. Here's the body code for content view. Navigation view, list missions, mission in. Navigation link, destination, text, detail view. Image, mission dot image, dot resizable, dot aspect ratio, content mode dot fit, dot frame, width 44, height 44. VStack, alignment dot leading, text, mission dot display name, dot font dot headline, text, mission dot launch date, nil coalescing NA. And then navigation bar title, moonshot. As you can see, that uses resizable, aspect ratio, content mode fit, and frame to make the image occupy a 44 by 44 space while also maintaining its original aspect ratio. This scenario is so common, SwiftUI actually gives us a small shortcut. Rather than using aspect ratio, content mode dot fit, we can just write scale to fit, like this. That will automatically cause the image to be scaled proportionally to fill its container, which in this case is a 44 by 44 frame. Run the app now and you'll see it looks okay. But what about those dates? Although we can look at 1968-12-21 and understand that it's the 21st of December 1968, it's still an unnatural date for almost everyone. We can do better than this. Swift's JSON decoder type has a property called Date Decoding Strategy, which determines how it should decode dates. We can provide that with a date formatter instance that describes how our dates are formatted. In this instance, our dates are written as year-month-day, but things are rarely so simple in the world of dates. Is the first month written as 1, 0, 1, Jan, or January? Are the years 1968 or 68? We already use the date style and time style properties of date formatter for using one of the built-in styles. But here we're going to use its date format property to specify a precise date, y-mm-dd. That's Swift's way of saying a year, then a dash, then a zero padded month, then a dash, then a zero padded day, with zero padding meaning that January's written as zero one rather than one. Now be very careful. Date formats are case sensitive. MM lowercase means zero padded minute, and MM uppercase means zero padded month. So open bundle decodable.swift and add this code directly after let decoder equals JSON decoder. Let formatter equals date formatter. Formatter.date format equals y mm dd. 
remembering that it's case sensitive. Then decoder.datedecoding strategy equals dot formatted formatter. That tells the decoder to parse dates in the exact format we expect. And if you run the code now, things will look exactly the same. Yes, nothing has changed, but that's okay. Nothing has changed because Swift doesn't realize that launch date is a date. After all, if you look at mission.swift, you can see we declared it like this. Launch date is an optional string. Now that our decoding code understands how our dates are formatted, we can change that property to be an optional date, like this. And now our code won't even compile. The problem now is this line of code in contentview.swift. This attempts to use an optional date inside a text view or replace it with NA if the date is empty. This is another place where a computed property works better. We can ask the mission itself to provide a formatted launch date that converts the optional date into a neatly formatted string or sends back NA for missing dates. This uses the same date formatter and date style properties we've used previously, so this should be somewhat familiar to you. Add this computed property to mission now via formatted launch date, string, if let launch date equals launch date, let formatter equals date formatter, formatter.date style equals dot long, return formatter.string from launch date, else return NA. And now replace the broken text view in content view with this mission.formatted launch date. With that change, our data will be rendered in a much more natural way. And, even better, will be rendered in whatever way is region appropriate for the user. What you see isn't necessarily what I see.